We're going to Kingford. this you're part of a group of students from around the world who get sent off to an island in the middle of the ocean cape Verde, to be exact your goal to teach churches health evangelism because you know you just finished the wahoo six-month course so why not everything is great but then things go south you're told that you're going to starve you run out of water you teach in some favela type of neighborhood but there's also blessings. Lots and lots of blessings. Praise the Lord. That is our story. It won't be in vain. Like, all our suffering. He, he wasn't sure what was going on, like how he was going to provide. God was still working, and his work was done regardless. Life has so many races, but what if the best prize is the hardest one to win? Would it be worth every sacrifice? In June 2018, a group of nine graduates from the Wildwood Center for Health Evangelism went on a one-month-long mission trip to Cape Verde to teach churches health evangelism. There were so many challenges along the way, including starvation. But every single struggle was worth it, knowing what great prize lay ahead as they ran this race for God. Souls were at stake, and that was worth giving it all. Like the eight hours, exactly like this. And like this, you know, perfect. <laughs> this is how you take a bath. The cake for you, right? You gotta take a bucket and fill it with water. It'll definitely wake you up. <laughs> The ice-cold bucket shower seemed to be a foretaste of what lay ahead of these young missionaries. The struggles would be uncomfortable at first, but the blessings that come out of it were guaranteed to be refreshing. The first struggle the team had to surrender to was splitting up the group. Half was going to Fogo. Uh, the boat ride. It was very new to me. And I was sitting there and I was like, no, this don't feel good. Like I leaned forward and I put my head down and then everything came off and I was just like, Bleh. I just, I threw up everything, all the chips that I ate. It was over for me. But 
yeah, it was very not so good. I didn't like it. I felt like I was gonna die. So guys, this is amazing how somehow in the boat bleach got poured out in my suitcase. <laughs> my nice clothes got all messed up. And now I just need to learn how to deal with these challenges, right? And don't cry. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll just come up with a new fashion. What do you think, Danique? Should I wear like this? There was a misunderstanding between the team and the Fogo host. There was not enough food to feed everyone. So far, the food situation hasn't been good. Um, I think that after the, after the pastor kindness, he provided some meals for us for the first day. Okay, apparently there is a misunderstanding between the pastor and and they're concerned we'll get food and breakfast. So they're taking us to the bakery to find something. So basically, he got a whole bunch of donations from the US to send food over. And it's not until now that he received the, the shipment for the food. But he doesn't even know what's in there yet. So he went home to sort it out to see what's in there. So we're going to see if the bakery is open. No, I just I just like to give people quality things. I mean, because if you if you cannot provide for the missionaries to do work, how can you give quality work? Because I'm like feeling dizzy, weak. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Awesome. So, if God brings you somehow we are here, and if we can train the church to do the work, at least yeah. some of the work, it won't be in vain. Like all our suffering. <laughs> yeah. You know. So I don't think we should give up now. Would it be worth every sacrifice? Uh, tonight I'll be teaching about God's healing program, and uh, basically it's uh, going back to first when God first created us, how He was intended for humans to live. Uh, I'm feeling very nervous. I'm still preparing currently. And it is very difficult. We were rehearsing, like me talked and she talked and I forgot my thought after she spoke in Portuguese and I was like, yeah, this is not as easy as I thought. But you know, with the power of God, anything can be possible. In that when we get ourselves into those problems that only Christ can get us out of with, our, with a different thinking, with thinking like him, so I made you create the five hidden up battles and made you. Now I would like you to think for a second. Why did God create Despite the struggles, the team started the health evangelism course for the St. Felipe Church in Fogo. And they got back up. The last two team members, Albert and Andy, finally came. Okay, so today I'll be speaking on um, the book of Daniel. Um, I try and make it practical, uh, use my own experience, or re what reading the book of Daniel did for me. The group was complete. I can say that it has become a little easier to speak and then being translated, but at the beginning it was really rough. Yeah. Evangelism. Evangelism. All in all, I hope they learn something and they will apply it in their life. The group was still having a problem with food 
So the pastor took them to a farm where they could harvest their own produce. Now they had an abundance. What is he saying? Uh, your hands are like offs, man hands. Offs? What is offs? 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 Ah. Man hands. Ah. 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 You know how to drive? Yeah? Try that. So we just got to this farm where we were offered just to pick uh, sweet potatoes and then we saw this truck, it's actually German and uh, I'm having some fun here so yeah, it's beautiful too bad it doesn't work <laughs> right? to intend to do? seeing The thing is, cassava is not hard to prepare to cook. You just need to know the basics, how you peel it, for example. And he never saw cassava before. So, Barbara advised me to cook the cassava this morning. <laughs> so he would see what it is first. But I'm still very curious to see how we will deal with this. I made potato bread before, right? Uh -huh. Cassava is similar to potato, uh -huh. so just replace it. <laughs> I just came up with it. <laughs> Albert, you are the most interesting person I've seen around so far. <laughs> Thank you. You come up with things like, like if you knew it, but you don't. <laughs> So, the cassava that was, I was afraid Albert would take over and destroy it, um, as I was saying earlier, actually turned out to be in a bread form and it tastes really good. Um, even the pastor tried it and it was something new, but he liked it and I think it was something very creative. So, I'm happy the result of the cassava I peeled this morning turned out like this. wasn't the only blessing. 
there was a baptism on the island, and Victoria was asked to preach. I was a little nervous. So I went outside again and prayed and said, Lord, I don't want to speak. Just speak through me. It was really the Holy Spirit. I didn't even use any notes or anything. He just guided my mind and brought the verses to that would connect to, to the theme. And the audience was paying attention to it. And I could see it was being a blessing to them as it was being to me. So I really felt that the Holy Spirit was working both in me and through me and in the people. Like a lot, a lot of people. It could easily be a lot of distraction and noise. It was hot. But they were, they were paying attention and the Holy Spirit was moving the hearts. So it was very... It was the work of the Holy Spirit. And I felt, I felt great to be part of that work. The race wasn't over yet. The missionaries had given all that they had. The baptism was a glimpse of what lay ahead as they worked, amidst the dust of struggle that got kicked up in their faces and the trials of hot air static with crackling heat. They did not give up. The prize was within arm's reach. So the Health Expo for me was actually the, the most exciting or the best part of the FOGO mission trip. When I remember when Andy started teaching about that, the people got really excited. And they were so excited for the Health Expo that they wanted us to actually do a Health Expo, which, which we were not planning to do. So we planned to do it. They wanted to go out there and uh, actually do what uh, he taught them. And the, the people being on fire here for Jesus, it is just so amazing. Like, you would like to see like everyone around the world being on fire like this for the help message, for the, just the message in the last days. Expo training the uh, church members and it made me realize how we really need to work together because with the expo I needed the whole team to actually help and they were so willing um, you know they were very active proactive uh, it's better to it's good for other people to help people to do the encouraging people to do as a size. Uh, things are going well. People are learning. and they really enjoy it, even to the point that on the Sabbath, they actually did their own health expo out of jail, which was really, really nice, because it really shows you that the information we gave really had an impact, and that was a blessing. Albert, what was that all about? Huh? What was that all about? Uh, she, she wanted my Facebook, but I don't have Facebook, so... Uh, Do you have a crush? She contact me. I don't know. So she'll contact me through Victoria. Ah, uh, I don't have Facebook. You don't have Facebook. Just WhatsApp. You don't have Facebook. 
Facebook. Eu disse, é que eu abri Facebook. Uh, só lamento, é o WhatsApp. Oh my god. She's um, pretty young and I think that she shouldn't be thinking about guys at the age she is, but um, she's a young lady and things like that do go through young people's mind at a young age, but um, I will keep my fire. Eu When I went to the volcano, it was very bumpy and it was so dry. Like when I breathed the air, I felt like the dryness is coming into me. To teach the class in the volcano was really um, a special experience just because um, when we got there, I was extremely tired and it was so dry and I felt so uncomfortable and I, I didn't know what to teach. Barbara said something about hydrotherapy. When I hear your pace behind Like a whisper in my mind I just prayed that God would, uh, will get me through that somehow. When you started teaching in the process, I really got encouraged again and happy and it was nice to see how the people also got involved, they were asking questions. So preaching inside a, a church that's in a volcano was a wonderful blessing and um, you know it was an, act, an active volcano, it last erupted uh, four years ago. So it was, you know, it was amazing thinking that, you know, you could be preaching and the volcano may erupt at any time. Okay, hiking up the volcano. Uh, it was very hard at the beginning because I was kind of keeping the group back. When we first started, it was like 5.30 in the a.m. I'm still half asleep. We got actually a tour guide called Miguel. And what's amazing, these are people who know what it means to lose everything. Uh, because in the last eruption in 2014, they lost everything. So these are people giving you things for free. And you know they're trying to rebuild their lives, which uh, really speaks and what it means to have a giving or a selfless uh, spirit. And breakfast, hiking up the volcano was very interesting. And then we found out our breakfast was two slices of bread and an apple. So that didn't really help much. But then when we got up top, it was like all worth it because it was so beautiful. Like in that moment, I just felt like I wanted everybody that I knew to stand there with me and just enjoy the view with me. It was so beautiful. Like it was way too long. was almost too symbolic for what this trip was all about. Socks were ripped from stones that got in their shoes, muscles were sore, and flesh was cut open. But it was all worth it once they reached the top. Now, at the end of their journey, they could look back on the impact that their work had made. They had reached tons of churches and trained close to 200 people by pushing through the struggles, they spark the start of health evangelism in Cape Verde. In the capital, some members were even planning on building a lifestyle center. The blessing conquered the suffering. This is not the end of their story. Albert, Barbara, Kanisha, Andy, and Victoria will keep on running. They know that they are part of a bigger race, a bigger plan to bring a message of hope to whomever has a heart longing for life, a plan to bring
bring everybody home. called me. You've made me a health evangelist, and so many have been before me. Here I am about to go to, Lord. Please give me the funds so that I can go. Please use me like you've used others. Every semester, Wildwood sends out students on mission trips all over the world, and we are still sending out more today. The work is not over yet. We will work till the end.